These men are members of a Nusra Front. It's one of the most powerful groups fighting against forces loyal to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. It was created almost two years ago. It's an Al-Qaeda-affiliated organization that the U.S., U.K., and U.N. consider a terrorist group. And Nusra wants to establish a Syrian state that's ruled under Islamic law known as Sharia. Not much is known about its leader, Abu Muhammad al-Julani. He joined Al-Qaeda to fight U.S. forces in Iraq. In his first ever interview, Al Jazeera's Taysir Alouni seen here speaks to Julani who wanted his identity hidden. He says his fighters have the upper hand in Syria. The battle is almost over. We have covered about 70 percent of it, and what is left is small. We will achieve victory soon. We pray to God to culminate these efforts with victory. It's only a matter of a few days. Al-Nusra keeps secret the number of its fighters in Syria, but estimates suggest that it could be anywhere between 5,000 up to 20,000 fighters. Most of the fighters are said to be Syrian who fought U.S. troops in Iraq. They use suicide attacks and have strongholds in different parts of Syria. The U.N. accused Syrian rebel groups, including Al-Nusra, of committing atrocities against government forces and civilians. But when Al Jazeera visited Idlib back in 2012, these people came out in their hundreds to voice their support for the group. Al Nusra also suffered the blow when hundreds of its foreign fighters defected with their weapons to join another Al Qaeda linked group known as the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. But along with other powerful rebel brigades, Al Nusra remains strong and does not recognize the Syrian opposition in exile. Its leader also rejects the idea of going to an international peace conference in Geneva. We will not recognize the results of the Geneva II conference, nor will the children or women of Syria. Those taking part in the conference have forgotten the sacrifices and the bloodshed. Besides, who has authorized them to represent the people? Above all, they have no presence on the ground. We cannot allow the Geneva II farce to fool the nation or allow the people to sink back into decades of injustice, oppression, and dictatorship. And because the war in Syria has polarized the region along ethnic and sectarian lines, Julani is now warning Arab states against the improved relations between the U.S. and Iran. Those regimes are now running out of options as the superpowers have turned against them. The ferocious tide of the Iranian Shias is now coming, and all of these states are now in jeopardy. The new Iranian ally has taken their place. If the Assad regime remained in power, which is in the interest of the superpowers and of the Iranian Shias, then the next target will be the Arabian Peninsula. The nature of the conflict in Syria is sectarian, regional and international. Almost three years of war have killed over 120,000 people and forced more than 7 million out of their homes and country. Omar Saleh Al Jazeera.